I'll give you this kalima with which the Arab and the Ajum world will be at your feet. So he was indicating towards a mission, towards a political nature, uh, this mission of the Prophet had, which uh, seemed that was not covered by your talk. Well, that was the question that he feels that the three prophets that came, they had more of a political nature, which I didn't cover in my talk. And he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa alayhi salam, go to the Pharaoh. He didn't say go to Bani Israel. Brother, quoting half the verse. The complete verse says, go to Pharaoh for what? To believe in one God. That to believe the Bani, that to free the Bani Israel. Did Moses said make me king? Did he make me king of Egypt? He went to the king to free those Jews, to free the Bani Israel. He didn't go to Pharaoh to say, okay, let's have a fight and now I want to be the political leader. He never said that. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Which political leader he wanted to become? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was offered by the pagan Arabs, by the Kuffars. If you know, it's mentioned in the Hadith that Udba, one of the representatives of the pagan Arabs, they said that, Oh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you give up your mission, we will make you the wealthiest man in the full country. We will make you the leader of a community. We will crown you king. And the Prophet didn't agree. They went even through his uncle that give up, don't divide the people, don't say there's only one God. If you give up this mission, we will make you king. And the Prophet said, told his uncle, Abu Talib, that even if they place the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left, I will not give up the mission until I die. So where is the political nature? Yes, politics is there in Islam. But these people were sent to spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the message is spread, how to lead a life and how to set up a country and a state is also mentioned. But the main thing was calling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you become a majority and when you have a particular state, how to lay down the rules and regulations of Allah says. But Moses, peace be upon him, was not sent to the Pharaoh to become the king of Egypt. He was sent to free the people who were in bondage so that later on when they become free, they can follow a life as laid down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam does include politics, but that doesn't mean it came to conquer the politics and become the king, etc. Hope that answers the question. Can I have a question from the sister's side? Assalamu alaikum. Um, the question is, what was the purpose of the prophets before Muhammad, peace be upon him, if they did not give the full teachings of Islam? And also, why did Islam come to Prophet Muhammad uh, instead of and not Prophet Moses or Prophet Jesus? The sister posed a question that what was the purpose of all the prophets that came before? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if they didn't preach Islam, and why did Islam come to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and why not to Prophet Moses, peace be upon him? Sister, the reply is, as I mentioned in my talk, all the prophets preached nothing but Islam. Even Adam preached Islam, peace be upon him, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Ishaq, Ismail, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all, all of them preach nothing but Islam. Islam by definition means submitting our will to Almighty God. What your question can be rephrased, this sister, that why wasn't the last and final revelation in the Quran given to Moses peace? That can be asked. All the Prophet preached Islam, but Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the last and final messenger. Because you are the last and final messenger, to him was revealed the last and final revelation. The question can be rephrased and can be asked that why didn't the last and final revelation came to Prophet Moses, peace be upon him? Why didn't the first messenger, Adam, peace be upon him, only got the Quran and the matter is over? Sister, as I mentioned, all the prophets taught nothing but Islam. Islam means submitting a will to Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason is, for example, you know, when I was a kid, I wanted to become a doctor. I am asking my mother, I am asking my father, Father, why didn't you put me in a medical college directly? Why did you put me in nursery and first standard, second standard, third standard, and then schooling and then college? Why didn't you put me in a medical college directly? There's a requirement that if you want to pass a medical college, first you have to do your kindergarten, and then you have to do your schooling, and then come to the college, and then get the grades. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself knows that when is the best time a human being can receive the message. I feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's most wise, he knew that if this message came earlier, the human being may not be in a capacity to assimilate it, to digest it. I feel Allah in his divine wisdom, he is the author of the Quran, he is the creator of us, he knows best when human being can receive it. And Allah thought it fit 1400 years back, this is the time when human beings can receive it, and that is the time he gave the last and final message, that is the glorious Quran. Hope that's the question. Alhamdulillah, we've got some barakah in our time. So. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Uh, I wanted to ask a first question, which the sister already asked about the Gospel of Barnabas. I wanted to ask why it's not mentioned in the Bible, but I'll leave that to your side. My second question is regarding crucifixion, which you mentioned uh, very briefly in your could talk. Could the brother please uh, raise his voice, inshallah? Or, okay. or could the brothers yeah. with the volume raise the mic? Yeah. It mentions in the Quran, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ Which means that they did not kill them, nor did they crucify him. But it was, it was uh, made unto them. I want to ask, what does the Quran mean by but what it was made unto them? Jazakallah khair. <coughs> what the brother has quoted the verse of the Quran from Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 157, which says that they said in boast, we kill Jesus, son of Mary. They killed him not, neither did they crucify him. It was only made to appear so. And all those who differ is full of doubts. With only conjecture to follow. For surety they killed him not. So they asking the question that if Jesus Christ peace was not killed, wasn't killed, what happened to him? What happened to him? And the Quran says he because the Christians most of them they believe that Jesus Christ peace be upon him was crucified. So your Allah clarifies that he was not killed, he was not crucified. It was made to appear so. Made to appear so means it was made to appear so. How it happened? When Allah does not want to give us the details, why should we actually strive to know the details? And Allah says that it was made to appear so. And all those who differ, there are many hypotheses that come that there was a man who was put instead of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, maybe it was Judas or maybe it was a Roman soldier, there are many hypotheses. But when Allah says, he was not killed, he was not crucified, he was made to appear so, all those who differ are full of doubts. Illa tiba zan, with only conjectures to follow. So when, what difference does it make, even if you come to know what happened, what difference does it make in a faith? So when Allah does not want to reveal, Allah says he was not killed, he was not crucified, that's sufficient for us. If you want to prove to a Christian how he was not crucified, why he was not crucified, and how to prove from the Bible, you can refer to my video cassette, was Christ uh, really crucified? It's a debate. But regarding what happened, for us Muslims it's sufficient. Allah says he was not called, he was not crucified, it's sufficient. What happened to him after that is mentioned. As Allah says in the Quran in the next verse, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 158, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up alive. So we know that he was raised him up alive. That Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was raised up alive. And we believe he is going to come again in the second coming, which is also mentioned in the Gospel of John. That he's going to come. He's going to come why? The reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept him alive is because he is the only prophet of God whose followers as a whole mistook that he claimed divinity. There is no other prophet of God whose followers considered that that prophet claimed divinity. He's the only one. That's the reason he has been raised up alive. So that in his second coming, he can clarify. As it's mentioned in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 116. He will tell in his second coming, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you bear witness. I never told them to worship me, but I said, Abdullah, worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbakum, who is my Lord and your Lord. Similarly, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John. On that day, when people will come and say, O oh Lord, O oh Master, did we not do wonders and miracles in your name? So Jesus Christ, peace be upon will tell them, Ye men of iniquity, ye sinful people, you get out from here, I don't even know you. When Christians will come in the second coming, O oh Lord, O oh Master, did we not do wonders and miracles in your name? Bible says, Gospel of John, he will say, Ye sinful people, you get out from here, I don't even know you. He will come in the second coming, not to teach us anything new, our religion, Islam, is complete. As Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 3, this thing is complete. Nothing new can be added, nothing can be subtracted. He will come to testify to the Christians that he never claimed divinity. Hope that answers the question. Can we have the next question, please, from the sister's side? And the question is, why do some Christians believe Jesus is God and others believe that he was the Son of God? Thank you. This has a question that why do some Christians believe he is God and some Christians believe that he is son of God? It is one and the same according to them. Because the son of God, like a son of man will be man, a son of goat will be goat, a son of lion will be lion, similarly son of God will be God. That is the concept. So if they say son of God or they say God, son of God meaning begotten son of God. Not the son of God as mentioned in the Bible like a righteous person. In that way, if you are righteous, you become a children of God. If I am righteous, I become son of God, no problem. But what they mean, begotten son of God. Begotten son of God, if the son of begotten son of God, 
God's son will also be God. And that's contempt. That's the reason if they say son of God, it's the same for them. Or if they say God, it's the same for them. Hope that answers the question. But I've proved to you in my lecture, he never claimed divinity. He never said that he was God. If any Christian can show me any unequivocal statement in the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God or worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity immediately today. Does anyone want to take up that challenge? <laughs> okay, inshallah, brother. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I came from America, and your brothers and sisters in America, especially in Oklahoma, convey their salam, and students of Peace Academy also in Oklahoma convey their salam. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you,